University Challenge. Asking the questions, Jeremy Paxman. Hello. Two more teams return tonight to play their first quarter-final match out of a possible three. Both are the first teams from their respective universities to have reached this stage of the competition since 1994, and whoever wins will be one step closer to an unprecedented place in the semi-finals. Now, the team from Royal Holloway began their series campaign with a hard-earned win over Cranfield University. They then faced St Andrews and were playing catch-up until the second picture round, where recognising Susan Sontag started them on a well-timed sprint to the finish. Their average score so far is 150 points per game. Their average age is 34. Let's meet them once again. Hi, I'm Joella Brownovich, originally from Highgate, North London, and I'm doing a BSc in Biology. Hello, I'm Joanna Brown. I'm also from North London, and I'm reading for a PhD in Creative Writing. And this is their captain. Hi, I'm George Harvey. I'm from Dunmo in Essex, and I'm studying for a Master's in Physics. Hi, I'm Mika Clayton. I'm originally from South Africa, but I live in Richmond, and I'm doing a PhD in Music and Neuropsychology. Now, after a 28-year absence, Robert Gordon University has returned to this competition in some style, beating first Roehampton and then the Courthold Institute of Art by more than 100 points each time. They didn't enjoy facing fine art bonuses under the Courthold's baleful stares, but other than that, they've looked pretty much at ease on subjects ranging from political history to pop music with an average score so far of 195 and an average age of 31. Let's meet the Robert Gordon team again. Hello, everyone. I'm Samar Fregene. I'm from Nigeria. I'm studying MSA Analytical Science in Robert Gordon University. Hi, my name is Donald Anderson. I'm from Aberdeen, and I'm studying accounting and finance. This is their captain. Hi, my name is Emily Cullen. I'm originally from Clanroach, County Wexford in Ireland, and I'm studying for a master's in pharmacy. Hello, I'm Faye Cook. I live in Edinburgh and I'm studying for a diploma in legal practice. Well, you all know the rules by now, so let's just get on with it. Fingers on the buzzers. Here's your first starter for ten. The name of what weapon links all of these? Firstly, a British ship whose capture by Chinese forces was a pretext for the Second Opium War. Secondly, a 1991 novel by Martin Amis. And thirdly, the an impossibility theorem exposing the shortcomings of ranked voting electoral systems. In Act 3 of Hamlet, this word comes shortly before... Robert Gordon Cullen. Dagger? No, you lose five points. Shortly before Outrageous Fortune. Royal Holloway Brown. Arrow? Arrow is correct. <laughs> you get three questions on supporting characters in the Hunger Games series of books and films. Firstly, played in the films by Donald Sutherland, President Snow, the series' main antagonist, has what first name? It is also the title of a play by Shakespeare set in the early Roman Republic. Oh. Coriolanus, is that? Or... I, don't, I don't know that Brutus... Uh, it fits Tyman? the description. Yeah. I, I don't think... I don't know the character, but I'm just thinking of... I know the character and the first name is not obvious. I think... Should we go for Coriolanus? I think I... it is Coriolanus. Coriolanus. Should we go for that? Okay. Sure. Coriolanus. Coriolanus is correct. Portrayed by Philip Seymour Hoffman, what is the first name of the game maker and resistance leader with the surname Heavensby? He shares his name with the Greek historian and author of The Parallel Lives. Plutarch. Plutarch. Plutarch is correct. And finally, a prominent title in Roman history, what is the first name of the Hunger Games announcer played by Stanley Tucci with the surname Flickerman? Caesar. Flickerman. Yeah. Caesar. Caesar. Caesar is correct. Ten points for this. <laughs> the name of what art movement follows Birmingham in the name of a grouping that included Conroy Maddox, Emmy Bridgewater and John Melville? The first of these travelled to Paris in the late 1930s to meet the movement's founder, André Breton. Royal Holloway Brown. Surrealist. Surrealist is correct. Your bonuses are on computers. In each case, name the device from the description. Firstly, the world's first programmable electronic computer used at Bletchley Park from 1944 onwards to decipher intercepted radio teleprinter transmissions. 
I need only a single word. Colossus. Colossus is correct. And secondly, the world's first circuit-based commercial quantum computer. It features 20 qubits in an airtight container and was first announced in 2019. Commercial quantum computer. I don't know. I've I, not I, been keeping up with it. Um, it may be a weird... I read about it and I know they did announce it, but I don't know what the name was. I don't know. That. I didn't know it had a Sorry. name, should specifically. We, should we just pass them? Maybe a qubit or something. Oh. Qubit? But IBM Quantum System 1. The first computer, thirdly, to beat a reigning chess champion yeah, in a blue. series of games, yeah. <laughs> defeating Garry Kasparov in 1997. Deep Blue. Deep Blue is correct. <laughs> right, ten points for this. I need a two-word term here. Gottfried Leibniz and Emily du Châtelet use the term vis viva to describe what concept in physics? It appears as a positive term in formulas for the Hamiltonian and Lagrangian in classical mechanics. Royal Holloway Harvey. Potential energy. No, anyone want to buzz from Robert Gordon? Uh, Robert Gordon Cullen. Kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is correct. <laughs> These are three bonuses on Japanese architectural terms. An important modular unit in Japanese architecture, what six-letter term denotes a rectangular floor mat with a thick straw base and a soft Tatami. rush cover with cloth borders? Tatami. Tatami? Tatami is correct. Give any of the terms commonly used in English to translate the term tenshu. This term indicates the central reinforced tower in castle complexes of the 16th and 17th centuries. Like, I'm just thinking like keystone or... Uh, I don't yeah. know. Keystone? Yeah. Keystone? No, it's keep. Oh, OK. Or donjon. Mm. What term denotes the symbolic gateway of a Shinto shrine? They are often painted red with cylindrical vertical posts, topped by two crosswise beams extending beyond the posts on either side. I can see it, but... Uh, yeah, I can picture it, but I can't yeah. remember what it's called. Mm. Have you got anything? No, I just keep thinking of <laughs> the word amulet. But mm. I don't... Sorry. Amulet? <laughs> That's Torii. OK, we're going to take a picture round now. For your picture starter, you're going to see a short list of French verbs. For ten points, give me the single preposition that all four take in the constructions indicated, in French, of course. Robert Gordon Cullen. Who? Mm -hmm. No? Anyone want to buzz from Royal Holloway? Royal Holloway Brown. Ah. Ah is correct, yes. <laughs> right. Following on from that selection of verbs that take the preposition ah, your bonuses are three more lists of French verbs. Again, in each case, give the preposition that all four take in the particular constructions given. You must spell your answer each time. Brilliant. Firstly? Oh, OK. Um... Avoir confiance. I think it's O-E-N. O-E-N. Correct. Secondly? Appuyer sur. Um, it's sur, S-U-R. Can I nominate yeah. you? Nominate Brown. Sur, S-U-R. Correct. And finally... De, D-E. De, D-E. De, D-E. Mm -hmm. de, de. Correct. Well done. <laughs> Ten points for this. The novels of which author are the subject of a series of essays entitled Men Who Hate Women and Women Who Kick Their Asses? This work is a feminist perspective on the author's Millennium Trilogy, Published posthumously from 2005. Robert Gordon Cullen. Paul Astor. No, you lose five points. Anyone want to buzz from Royal Holloway? Royal Holloway Brown. Siri Hustvet. No, it's Stieg Larsson. Ten points for this. Written and directed by Anand Gandhi, which 2012 film follows a stockbroker, a photographer and a monk in an exploration of the meaning of life? Its three-word title includes a Greek hero and refers to a thought experiment that links Heraclitus, John Locke and Trigger's broom. Royal Holloway Harvey. Ship of Theseus. Ship of Theseus is correct. <laughs> right, you're going to get a set of bonuses this time on the feminist and civil rights activist Audrey Lorde. What is the single-word title of Lorde's first major poetry collection? In the title poem, Lord uses this substance as a symbol for the total black being spoken from the Earth's inside. Tom? 
Um, I thought it was called Undersong, the first one. Sorry, I'm a bit confused. I thought the first one was called Undersong. So um, it's a substance, you think it might it, be? Yeah, it's a black substance that, that was a title. Isn't it Pitch? Pitch, maybe. Pitch? Go for it. It's Pitch. Okay, go for Pitch. Go for, yeah. Maybe. Pitch? Oh, it's coal. Oh, it's coal. In 1984, Lord published a collection of essays whose themes included intersectionality, violence against women and black feminism. I want you to give me the two-word title, please. Um, it's something anger, I think. Um, is it what silent film? Did you say anger? Oh, my God. Come on, let's have it, please. Maybe quiet anger? Quiet anger. No, it's Sister Outsider. Sister Outsider. Give the two words that complete the title of a prominent essay in Sister Outsider. The master's tools will never dismantle the what? The master's house. Master's house. Yeah. Master's house. The master's house is correct. Ten points for this. <laughs> Referring to a folk etymology, the OED states that a spelling ending in O U G H of what common word ought, quote, to be abandoned as a mere error. The word in question denotes an involuntary spasmodic contraction of the diaphragm. That... Roll Holloway Brown. Hiccup. Hiccup is correct. Well done. Your bonuses are on biological terms. Identify each word from the definition. All three answers begin with the same three letters. Firstly, a type of oily sweat gland located at the junction of the dermis and the subcutaneous fat. Oh. In humans, they're primarily located in the armpits. Oh, I don't know. Is that pituitary? I, I don't think pituitary is in the brain. No, it's pituitary in the brain. Um, what kind of sweat gland? Tears, lacrosis, I don't know. Right? Not, or lymph, not lymph. Oh, Should we just pass and get the first three yeah. letters? Pass. Apocrine is what I was looking for. Ap a sure. signal displayed by an animal to potential predators indicating their toxicity or unpalatability, often through bright coloration. No. Okay, it begins with apo. Apo. Um, I, I don't know, I, I don't do. Um, I, I have no idea. No. Right. No. Ap Apocrypha? No, it's aposematism. And finally, a cellular process that includes stages such as pycnosis and karyorexis. Sir John Sulston was jointly awarded the 2002 Nobel Prize for his work on it. I think apoptosis, but it didn't say cell death. Ap apoptosis is the only thing I can think of. But I'm... Can I nominate you? Sure. Nominate Abramovich. Uh, apoptosis? Apoptosis is correct. <laughs> Right, we're going to take a start question now. From the Greek for preparing drugs, what single word term is applied to an official publication containing a comprehensive list of pharmaceutical substances and medicinal products? Along with... Robert Gordon Cullen. Pharmacopoeia. Correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on map projections this time. Which cylindrical map projection was primarily designed for marine navigation? It exaggerates the size of regions further from the equator Mark and is named after the Mercator? Flemish geographer who... Mercator. Mercator is correct. Which Canadian cartographer gives his name to the 1996 butterfly projection which is arranged as an unfolded globe that is either Pacific or Atlantic centred? Is this, is this Eckhart? Or am I thinking of something else? I don't know. Eckhart? No, it's Steve Waterman. What eponymous projection was developed in 1963 in response to an appeal from the Rand McNally Corporation. It shows the entire world at once, but it is neither equal area nor conformal, abandoning both for a compromise. Not sure. I'm not sure. Mm. This is the one that makes Africa longer, isn't it? So should we go Swindleton Dyer or Eckert? Because there's only ones I think I've heard of. And was Eckert 60s, do you think? I don't know. Might have been. Yeah. Eckert? Well, it's the Robinson projection. Right, we're going to take a music round now. If your music starts, you'll hear a piece of classical music. Ten points if you can name its composer. Robert Gordon Anderson. Vivaldi. Well, you can hear a little more, Royal Holloway. <laughs> Royal Holloway Clayton. Beethoven? No, it's by Schubert. So we're going to take the music bonuses in a moment or two. Ten points at stake for this. Comprising turf-built houses dating to the 10th century, the archaeological site known as Lance aux Meadows 
is on which Canadian island? It is the only confirmed Norse settlement. Royal Holloway Harvey. Newfoundland. Newfoundland is correct. <laughs> so you get the music bonuses. You'll recall that for your music starter, you heard part of Schubert's String Quartet number 14 in D minor, also known as the Death and the Maiden Quartet. Your bonuses are three more examples of the key of D minor being used in works or parts of works relating to death. Name the composer of each. Firstly. OK. I think this is Liszt's Totem Dance. Liszt. I think so. Yeah. Should we go to the again? Liszt. This is correct. That's his Dance of Death. Secondly, the composer of this comic piece, written originally for solo piano. Oh, oh, it's um. Who wrote it then? Is it's death related? What, what era? Russian Ravel. Um, um, I'm just not sure who wrote it. Um, God, try Ravel. R Ravel. Maybe, yeah. Ravel. No, it's Guno. Guno. The funeral march of a marionette. Finally, the composer of this operatic overture, the D minor opening, foreshadows a later character death. Mozart, yeah. Yeah. Mozart. 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 Correct, well done. Ten points for this. Listen to the statement and answer the question that follows. Dan Simmons' 2009 novel, Drood, is a fictionalised account of the last years of the life of Charles Dickens. It is written from the perspective of which novelist, a close friend of Dickens, ah. and the author of... Robert Gordon Cullen. Wilkie Collins. Wilkie Collins is correct, well done. These bonuses are on recent works of speculative fiction. Set on a fictional island of Kikon, which 2017 work by the Canadian author Fonda Lee is the first of a trilogy and is set in a world in which an eponymous mineral confers enhanced abilities? Well, I'm not sure. No. Speculative fiction, no. Pass. That's Jade City. Which 2018 work by Rebecca F. Kuang is set during a conflict inspired by the Second Sino-Japanese War? Its title names a flower. Second Sino-Japanese War. Um, Jasmine or... Chrysanthemum. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> Chrysanthemum. Nope, it's the Poppy War. Oh, oh. First published in English in 2014, which novel by the Chinese author Xu Xin Liu has a title that refers to a chaotic system in physics. Chaotic system in physics. Hmm. Can't think of that uh, No. Yeah, pass. That's the three-body problem. Yeah. Right, ten points for this. I need a single word answer here. In The Golden Bough, James Gordon Fraser quotes a source stating that the most considerable of the Druidic festivals is that of which ancient Celtic celebration of May Day? Robert Gordon Cullen. Beltane or Beltane? Beltane as it is in English, yes. <laughs> right, you get a set of bonuses on an English county. I need a two-word name here. Commemorative plaques in which ceremonial and metropolitan county mark the bands Palp and Human League? The athlete Jessica Ennis Hill and the institution in 1776 of the St Ledger Stakes. Which Yorkshire? Okay, so. Well, which Yorkshire is Sheffield? Sheffield? Is it, it West it Yorkshire? Yorkshire? West Yorkshire, I right? Think. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's not West, like... yeah. Go West go Yorkshire? No, it's South Yorkshire. Oh, okay. <laughs> a blue plaque in Mexborough, South Yorkshire, commemorates the animal rights campaigner Donald Watson. What five letter term did he coin in 1944? Hmm. Animal rights? Oh, I'm just thinking, kind of like, would it be like vegan or something? Or, yeah, I don't know. Vegan? Vegan? Vegan is correct. A blue plaque in which village near Barnsley marks the home of the colliery band that appeared in the 1996 film Brassed Off? No. Colliery band? 
Oh, oh I feel like this band. Mm, uh, Grimthor, Grimthor or something? Green, can I nominate you? Um, okay. Nominate but, Anderson? Grimthorpe, is that? Grimthorpe is correct, yes. <laughs> right, ten points for this. Name either of the two platinum group elements discovered by the English chemist William Wollaston in 1802 and 1804. One was... Robert Gordon Cullen. Iridium and osmium? No, you lose five points. Roll Holloway Harvey. Rhodium. Rhodium was one, the other was palladium. <laughs> These are three bonuses on significant moments in the history of fashion, according to Vogue magazine. These women, I'm bloody well going to dress them in black. These are the words of which French designer in the 1920s. She's particularly associated with the little black dress. Coco, oh, was, mm -hmm. was it Coco Chanel? Is it too early? Uh, which year, sorry? 1920s. It could be Coco Chanel. That, that yeah. was my first reaction, it's yeah. Coco Chanel, but... Should, should we, it's black probably dress. best to go for that, then. Yeah. Just try it. OK. Coco Chanel? Correct. A 1966 collection by which designer featured Le Smoking? The first tuxedo designed specifically for women. Maybe Yves Saint Laurent. Yves Saint Laurent. No, I don't know. I, I also think Yves Saint Laurent. Yves Saint Laurent, yeah. Yves Saint Laurent? Correct. And finally, Elsa Schiaparelli collaborated with which surrealist artist on the 1937 lobster dress? Oh, so that's going to be Dali. Dali, yeah. Dali, yeah. Dali yeah. lobster telephone. Dali? Dali is correct. We're going to take a picture around now. If you're a picture starter, you will see a still from a film for 10 points. Please name the film. Roll Holloway Brown. Is it the Battle of Algiers? It is the Battle of Algiers. You would have got it straight away if you'd held the music, yes. We follow on from Pontecorvo's Battle of Algiers with three more stills from films connected with the Algerian War of Independence. Five points for each you can correctly identify. Firstly... Um, so that's Juliette Binoche yeah, but... and Daniel Otoy. But I don't know this movie, I don't think. Do you recognise it? Do you recognise no, it, um, Pass, I guess. I should, don't know. Yeah, should we pass? Pass. It's caché or hidden. Right. Secondly, this one. Um, so it looks like a 60s film. I don't know this one. Do you know who it is? No, I feel like I should do. And I Come don't. on. Sorry, okay, well, pass. Pass. That's Jean-Luc Godard's Le Petit Soldat. And finally... Oh, that is the Day of the Jackal. Day of the Jackal? Yeah, yeah I think so. The Day of the Jackal. It is the Day of the Jackal. Well done. <laughs> Ten points for this. Born in 1925, which French philosopher's works include capitalism and schizophrenia? Robert Gordon Anderson. Gilles Deleuze. Gilles Deleuze is correct. Well done. <laughs> you get a set of bonuses on grime, the music genre, that is. I need an exact number here. Dizzy Rascal's track, Focus, has how many beats per minute? The number is frequently cited as the most typical of the grime genre. Is it, is it quite one, fast? Quite... So is that like 140 or something? Yeah, I was thinking like maybe 130, something like that. Uh, 140? Correct. What area of London precedes E3 in the name of a track by Wiley, the so-called godfather of grime? Brixton? In the East, E3 would be like, could it be like, I don't really know, oh God, all these Londoners, um, like Leighton or something, or I don't know. Um, if you've heard know, of Hackney? it. Hackney? No, I've not heard of it. But... Yeah, I know there's some of them from Brixton, right? Brixton? No, it's Bo. In 2017, which album became the first grime album to reach number one in the UK charts? I need a four word title. Was it the Stormzy one? I'm not sure what it was called. Do you know the name? Stormzy one? Um, I don't know. Um, I'm going to have to just no. pass it. No. Ah, Stormzy, 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 Stormzy. <laughs> There's Gang Signs and Prayer by Stormzy, bad luck. <laughs> of the amino acids found in proteins, methionine and cysteine are the only two whose side chains contain which chemical element? In the latter, it is present in a simple thiol group. Robert Gordon Cook. Sulfur? Sulfur is correct, yes. You get these bonuses on areas of England. The memorial known as the Rufus Stone was erected near the village of Minstead in the 18th century to recall a historical event in which national park? No idea. National park? What are they, like, 
Tilton's New Forest. I don't really. No. Exmoor. Um, That's the New Forest. Awesome. Referred to as a forest, although it consists largely of barren, rocky upland, what region of Leicestershire has Barden Hill as its highest point? Um, Leicestershire, would this be? Kind this of is like. This is this Sherwood Forest? Oh, right. yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. 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 Next to North. Yeah. Sherwood Forest? It's uh, Charnwood Forest. Formerly used for coal mining and iron working, which royal forest is primarily located in Gloucestershire in an area enclosed by the rivers Wye and Severn? Same. Yeah. the last mm. name. But it's the Forest of Dean. Is oh, that? That's yeah. one. <laughs> I think it's near there. I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. Forest of Dean? It is the Forest of Dean, yes. Well done. <laughs> Ten points for this. Who or what is addressed in the ode by John Keats that ends with the words, Fled is that music. Do I wake or sleep? Royal Holloway Brown. Nightingale. The Nightingale is correct. <laughs> These bonuses are on marine mammals. Including the blue whale, what suborder of whales takes its name from the keratinous plates attached to the upper jaw and used for filter feeding? I don't know. Um, yeah, I was thinking cetaceans, but that's not the suborder, I don't think. That's just, just the dolphins and whales. Yeah, group. yeah no, it's Come probably on. a group of whales. Uh, I don't know. Cetaceans? No, they're baleen whales. Um, a Scandinavian word. What term describes the family of baleen whales that includes the blue, say, and minky whales? Orca? No, it's a type mm -hmm. of whale. It's always a dolphin. Um, right, okay. I don't know, uh, sperm whales or something. I, I don't know. It's a skin. Okay. Hmm? Oh, no, I think it's a Scandi word. Oh, it's Come a Scandi word. It, please. Um, I don't know. Um, Pass. It's raw quail. What three letter word appears in the name of the whale species, also known as the common raw quail? It is noted for vocalizations that can travel up to 1,000 miles. Oh, my God. Um, Ballisk, oh, three letters. Two letters. Yes. Three letters. Three letters. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I don't know. It was a pass. That's the fin whale. Right, ten points for this. Dating to 1780 and one of the oldest continuously published newspapers in the world, the publication known by the initials NZZ has its headquarters in which European city? Its website is nzz.ch. <laughs> Robert Gordon Cullen. Zurich. Zurich is correct. Well done. <laughs> These bonuses are on popes. In each case, identify the regnal name shared by the following. Firstly, the first who excommunicated Pelagius in 417, and the third who excommunicated King John in 1209. Urban? Um, That's a big one. Robert Gordon have 85, but Lord Holloway have 170. Well, many congratulations to you, Royal Holloway. We should look forward to seeing you in the next stage of the competition. You have to win two quarterfinals, remember, in order to go through to the semis. Robert Gordon, you have to win next time to stay in the competition. I hope you can join us next time for another quarterfinal. But until then, it's goodbye from Robert Gordon University. Goodbye. Bye -bye. It's goodbye from Royal Holloway. Goodbye. goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>